Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's week 12 of the NFL. We're here to recap this week's action. Poker guy, you're back, brother. Good to have you back. Thanks, man. I listened to your pod. It was fucking awesome. I was cracking up the whole time. Uh, wish I was doing the pod with you instead of getting ripped on by my little cousins. Apparently, I'm balding, and they will not let me live. They just rip on me all the time, and now I know what it feels like to to get made fun of by little 12, 13-year-old girls. It is not fun. I'm getting ripped on. I'm about to shave my head, but um, let's just move forward, man. Let's talk about some fun things. How was your Thanksgiving, man? Did you have a good time? It was good, man. I avoided my family completely. I avoided pretty awesome. much the outside. Did a, did a little pod to uh, help everybody with their, their ride to and from. But I'll tell you what, like I, like I talked about earlier, my grandma is the first one to call me out for losing my hair. So I know what that can be like. Family can be, it can be a little too honest, a little too brutal at times. But, mm-hmm. you know, hey, it's either get on the Propecia train or, or hit, up the, hit up the Clippers. That's your choice to make, man. That's your choice well, to make. Well, I want my penis to work. I don't want it to fall off. So I think I'm just going to buzz it, you know, just how like normal people do. I don't really want to staple things to my my head or use whatever um, flex seal to glue things to my forehead. So I'll probably just shave it. Um, but I will keep you posted, brother. I will keep, keep you posted. Keep me posted, man. I'll be following your Twitch feed. What's your Twitch feed now? Give yourself a little plug there. Uh, yeah, I got a Twitch feed, PokerGuy98. I play Black Ops, and I get made fun of by uh, people for looking Asian and also balding. So it's not going too good, but I love Black Ops, and it's fun. So if you guys are playing, join up. Super fun. Who's this bald Asian guy? Well, now he's actually Ecuadorian. So yeah. I want to th- I want to thank you for taking a break, uh, getting getting off the border, <laughs> fighting through the tear gas, and making it over here for the pod today. Uh, you're, you're a true hero. And uh, you're the type of guy, the type of warrior that this podcast needs. Yep. So let's go ahead. Let's get into these NFL games. We're going to start off with the Raiders at the Ravens. So a uh, rough, rough, rough week. If you listened to the last pod and you, you heard all my picks, I hope you bet against me because you're doing very well. If that's the way that you decided to go, if you decided to fade me on my picks, that'd be the way to do it. So I had the Raiders in this one. They had 13 and a half. And, of course, end of the game, Derek Unicycle. Has a chance. They're down 10, 27-17. Has a chance to get the Raiders back in the game. And what does he do? He decides to not fucking pay attention to the pass rush, <laughs> get strip sacked, and then future Hall of Famer Terrell Suggs picks up the ball with one gigantic paw. Dude's got no ball security. He doesn't care. He'll work on that. But he picks that thing up and rumbles into the end zone for a comfortable cover for all Ravens fans and betters. Ravens six and five, Raiders fall to two and nine, and I guess old Derek Carr's plan to fight away and keep them from getting that number one draft pick not exactly going very well. Did you see? Uh, he did a really good Tony Romo impression once uh, Terrell Suggs robbed him, or Suggs robbed him. He just laid face down as if his clavicle was broken and didn't move, and it was pretty awesome. It's kind of like that kid in the uh, movie A Christmas Story. The little brother Randy, when he gets knocked down, he just lays there like a slug. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. his best defense, man. That's Carr's best defense today, and that was basically the whole the, the story of the Raiders afternoon. Now, Derek Unicycle, 194 yards. Terrell Suggs with the the important fumble recovery for everyone betting on the game. Interesting thing here, Lamar Jackson only 11 rushing attempts. They decided to. Uh, Take the workload off him a little bit in the running game. What'd you think, man? I thought he played a pretty good game. He had some good passes. Um, I know they were trying to keep him in the pocket, but he had some good throws. Um, he's not Tim Tebow terrible, but he, you know, he's still running. I mean, it's well. only his second NFL game. I'm going to give him a little bit of time. You know, he's got he's got a while before the game slows down for him on the passing front, but he's faster than almost everybody else on the field, so that's always going to be in his favor. And maybe a little bit, this this win for the Ravens, maybe a little bit of taking the edge off for crazy Jack Harbaugh in the Elder Harbaugh household <laughs> after the sting. Sting left by his his other son's devastating defeat. And we'll get to that towards the end of this thing as we talk about one of my excellent predictions, which was the complete destruction of the Michigan football team. But a little bit of, a little bit of reprieve for everyone in the Harbaugh household. Why wait? Just talk about it now, man. Right, let's, go, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, so the game, the game was played this weekend. 
And who'd have guessed for the seventh time in a row? Oh, wait, I would have guessed that Urban Meyer and his boys straight up just pants Jim Harbaugh and everybody in the state of Michigan. That was brutal. I mean, that was really brutal. Uh, you know, the funny thing about it is that Jim Harbaugh, he almost made me hate hate dipping, right? Because he was standing on the sideline. And to see somebody get worked over like that with a giant lipper in their mouth, I was like, man, I used to think that that looked cool, but it doesn't look cool anymore, Jim. So what's going? So what happened to Urban Meyer now? Now that is he is he's brain cancer? Is it fixed now? Is it cured? Or is it now? Is it just completely gone? Like how's that going? I think it's fixed. It's it's up and down. But this week, I think the migraines, just a little bit of Tylenol, a little bit of baby aspirin. He's going to be good. He's not going to have too many headaches. Good to no. hear. I'm excited for you. Congratulations, Urban Meyer. And I, I we didn't talk about this before, but whatever happened to the Zach Smith Chronicles? I oh, kind so of like Zach kind of... Smith, yeah, Zach Smith. I've been following him on Twitter. If you're not following Zach Smith on Twitter, you shouldn't even be on Twitter because he is one of the best follows, and he keeps calling people out nonstop, twenty four seven. All basically, Zach Smith's Twitter feed is him dropping dimes on people, and then people in the comments, just any version. You know, there's that one where they're like, people are just like, I'm just here to watch this shit. Basically, you know, the the gifts where people are just throwing popcorn in their mouth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or the one where the guy snaps the chair down into the ground and sits down. So it's like. That and then everyone just accusing Zach of being <laughs> being drunk as fuck <laughs> whenever he's on Twitter. <laughs> it's a nonstop, you know, barrage of Zach Smith talking shit and people accusing him of being drunk. And I don't know how far those accusations are off from reality, so it's tough to defend him there. But he is at this point in time, he and Captain Andrew Luck are the the best follows on Twitter. Okay, this is Captain Andrew Luck, the guy that he writes letters in the civil war is that you were talking about that last week. Yeah. So this is captain Andrew luck. I'm going to get on his, uh, I'll get on his Twitter account here. Let me see what he's got going on, but he had a good, he had a good, uh, tweet today following the, uh, the, uh, Colts victory. Dearest mother. I write you so full of joy. I might burst our unit secured yet another victory that makes five straight or an entire hand. The Dolphin men put up a great fight, but our aquatic drilling played dividends. Our trusted sniper <laughs> capped the win. I am beaming, Andrew. <laughs> and so that's that's his recap of, of the uh, Colts game there. So the college football weekend was an absolute shit show for a couple reasons. Um, I don't know. Did you see that LSU game? The LSU game that went into like nine overtimes? So that was great. 74-72, Jimbo, and the they giggumed. They, they goo ahead. <laughs> And uh, get pissed, LSU fans, because you got jobbed right there. There were a couple big plays in that where it didn't make any sense. I think there was an interception that wasn't an interception. That was that moment where uh, Ed Ogeron got the Gatorade bath that never should have been. So yep. he's got to stand through those seven fucking overtimes dripping wet and praying to God that he's actually going to win this thing so he doesn't become the butt of a joke. Well, I guess there were... I guess they're sending him up a little bit harder on the Texas A&M side because God did not let Ed prevail after <laughs> seven overtimes, 74-72, the highest scoring game, I think, in FBS history. And I'll tell you what, the big thing there for me was the officials not knowing how to do their jobs and not knowing the rule book because they went ahead. Texas A&M spiked the ball with three seconds left. Clock ran out, and then they put another second left on the clock at the end of regulation and it is straight up in the rule book that you cannot spike the ball with three or less seconds left. Like that's in the, that's in a book somewhere that people like you or I don't read, but I'll tell you what it's in there and Ed's pissed about it. And everybody in the great state of Louisiana is pretty damn pissed about it too. Well, they're going to get over it though. The saints are killing it. So get over it. Get over it. Saints fans and LSU people. Cause you guys are just doing, just doing just fine. But there's another game that I'm sure you wanted to talk about. Um, the Arizona, uh, ASU game. I know you were really psyched about that game. Talk us through yeah, that. Yeah, I was excited for that until I actually watched the fucking ball game. Cause it was classic Arizona football. We've been mired in just, just a shit storm for the past. I don't know since the desert desert swarm of the late nineties, you know, we had one good year a couple years ago with rich Rodriguez. 
like we were 10 and three. And then of course we shat our pants at the end of the year, got smoked by Oregon in the, uh, in the Pac-12 championship. And what's funny about that is I had a couple buddies that went up to that game. They just kind of, as an ad hoc thing, I had to work. I couldn't go with them. And I was really, I was really bummed, man. I was like, God damn, dude, that's super cool that they're going up there. The game was in San Francisco and they drove up all the way from Tucson. Like three or four of them drove up. I was like 17 or 18 hours. They fucking drove up there and we got smoked out of the building by halftime. Right. It was, it was a beat down as <laughs> a beat down. I remember I was out on my front porch, on my back porch, drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette at halftime being like, Oh my God. Thank God I didn't end up on that trip. <laughs> Thank God I did not end up on that trip. And then two of them got drunk and started to fight with each other. And then of course I had to ride home the rest of the way. It got, it got a little bit gnarly, but it was, you know, it wasn't that bad. So that was a big flame out. And then that same year, of course, one of our dipshit kickers missed a very easy field goal at the end of the game to beat USC. We always lose to USC. We can beat Oregon for some reason, but we can never beat USC. And then this year, classic Wildcat football. We're up 40 to 21 in the second half to Herm Edwards. All right. Herm Edwards is not exactly Bill Belichick. He's not exactly Nick Saban. It's like, dude, he is not like outwitting us. They're just running the same shit. And all of a sudden, wouldn't you know it? Oh, I got a turn over here. I got a touchdown there. And the butt cheeks tighten up. And the Sun Devils go up 41-40. And then we're down. They try for a two-point conversion. They don't make it. And then we went ahead and cruised down the field for a winning field goal attempt. And, I mean, come on. I knew what was going to happen before it even happened. Our kicker, well, I don't know what the fuck his name is, Josh somebody, he goes ahead. He'd hit 12 in a row before that. He made four field goals already in that game. But, of course, the game on the line, the biggest moment, <coughs> wide right, classic choke job. It's over. We lose. Know your place because we fucking suck. It's, it's like the water boy, man. Oh, no, we suck again because we just – I'm glad we're not going to a bowl game. We don't deserve to go to a bowl game. It was funny. I was reading some of the local news articles, and they were trying to spin it and be like, here's the good thing about not going to a bowl game. It gives our coaches more time to recruit. Uh, who the fuck are they recruiting? One-star losers who want to go to a program that's not making it to a bowl game? It's fucking ridiculous. It, it is pretty ridiculous. Do you want to talk about now, like, uh, are you getting into any arguments online as far as, like um... – like, like, I know you're trying to, you know, upset about this loss, but are you reaching out to anybody for... So, yeah, and then apparently it's it's illegal to be upset about your kicker pulling a choke job at the end of this. Because so I get on Twitter, and I say a few things. None of them that inflammatory. I'm just like, dude, that was a choke job. You're carrying, all, you're, you're carrying in a long tradition of Arizona kickers that just suck. And then, you know, I mean... So the, the kicker even came out and he he put out this like two two page like long winded apology about how oh going to school was the best five years of his life and he's sorry that he let us down and but he's not gonna let this affect him going forward in his life that's fucking great man but how about you just make the damn kick next time instead of you know getting an English major and writing a fucking War and Peace novel saying us you're sorry man. Like, I don't need that shit. I need you to make the kick, dude. I need you to make that kick. And because I come out on Twitter and I say, hey, dude, you choked. Sorry. I, sorry, but I don't accept your apology, sir. I do not accept <laughs> it. <laughs> you can take your apology and you can shove it up your ass if you can find the middle of it, which you probably can't because you can't find the middle of the fucking goalpost when it matters. So it's like. I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy for being mad about my kicker pulling a choke job because I care and I want my team to win. Well, we don't deserve a winning football team because we got a bunch of soft ass fans, dude. Our fans are fucking Kevin Durant soft, baby poop soft, dude. That's how soft we are. And that's why our football program is in the state that it's in because we don't care enough. I'll tell you what, man, 
Harvey Updike, that dude's willing to go to jail. He's willing to go to jail when Cam Newton fucking Macarena's on his ass and dances <laughs> around doing the Dougie, winning national championships. Fuck you. Fuck all your trees, Auburn. I'm going to kill them all and then brag about her on the radio and go to jail. Tennessee fans care about their team so much, they're willing to drag a man through the mud, call him complicit in a child molestation ring just to keep him from being their head football coach. Granted, you're scumbags for that, Tennessee. But I got newfound respect for your passion for the game because apparently we're not allowed to hold student athletes accountable, right? People come out like, hey, bro, what gives you the right to say negative things about our student athletes? It's like, dude, fuck you. What gives me the right, man? I'm, I'm a fucking supporter of this team. And he didn't do his job. He didn't do his job, man. And you're going to fucking come at me for calling him out on it? No, no, I don't think so, man. I don't think so. And I may or may not have gotten into it with that kicker's dad on Twitter as well. I'm pretty sure that one of the people I was getting into it with uh, was his dad. He was AZ football dad. And on his posts, um, he had pretty much nothing but posts of that kicker. So uh, AZ football dad, um, I'm not sorry. I'm never going to be sorry. And your son fucking choked, man. I get it. He was he made his last 12. Acknowledge. Great. He made four kicks in that game. Cool. Love it. Way to go. But when the chips were down, when we needed him the most, he fucking choked. All right? He let us down. And I guess at the end of the day, you let us down, sir. <laughs> you let us down <laughs> by not rearing him, by not having the proper pressure in his life so he could handle those situations. So at the end of the day, maybe I put this on you. I think I'm actually going to put this on you. All this anger and angst that I'm feeling, this is your fault, brother. It's your fault. And I'll, maybe I'll tell him that a little bit later on a <laughs> social media account. Maybe I'll do that. Oh, man, that's the beauty of Twitter. You're just like shitting on this guy's like personal Twitter, and you're just reaching out to him, just shitting on him. That's awesome. Oh, by the way, AZ football dad guy, you take that turkey hand that he traced in like fifth grade that looks like a turkey, and you just rip that in half, sir. You just rip that shit in half. Yeah, I mean, Grant, I mean, people can take it too far. And you, Bobby Fever on Twitter, man. You can follow me there. You can check out everything I said. Nothing crossed the line. Yeah, it's but your shit's, like pretty, a, your shit's pretty neutral. It's not like that. You're not like that one guy that was doing the racial stuff. I don't know if you saw that. Um, the Florida State coach, this dude, he like Photoshopped some. I get, okay, so Florida State coach, he happens to be African American. And yeah, Willie he's, Taggart. He's 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 an African American man. He's the first African American head coach at Florida State. And you live in Florida, and you know that the dark underbelly of Florida is that it is in the South. A lot of stars and bars driving around. A lot of a lot of a lot of trucks with unnecessary lifted tires. A lot of steel nut sacks hanging off on the back of that car. A lot of Calvin's lot pissing of on are- off brands of trucks. And a lot of Chipotle's and a lot of Taco Bell's, coincidentally, and a lot of Mountain Dew vending machines. Don't, don't you bring Chipotle into this, sir. Do you guys don't you bring lo- Chipotle into this? I love Chipotle as much as any other American does, but you white people, excuse me, you Caucasian people, excuse me, you Caucasian adults, you guys love Chipotle. You guys love it. You guys breathe it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But don't bring it into this. Chipotle's got nothing to do with this. Don't you bring that into that racist man's tweets. Anyway, so this racist guy, he posts a picture of what appears to be Willie Taggart photoshopped onto some guy that got lynched. It's like super untasteful, distasteful, uh, very different from what you did. And yeah, people are super mega pissed off about it. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. Hey, me and this kicker are both cisgendered white males. All right. So we are operating on equal levels of privilege. And the guy that, that did that fucking racist tweet is a... He's like a concierge for Hilton, excuse me, presumably a former concierge for Hilton hotels. And he's like, he's exactly the guy, like, I can't remember what we were talking about, but if you had, if you had a police sketch artist, if you're just told a police sketch artist, like, Hey man, I'm going to describe to you what I think, what this guy who did this looks like. That's exactly what he looks like. Cause he's a bald headed white guy. It's probably about 400 pounds. I don't know how tall he is, but if he's over six feet, he's probably close to 400 pounds based off of his his Twitter profile picture, which, you know, it's kind of he kind of has like a MySpace picture like back in the day, how like the, the chicks would do that. And you'd be like, I, didn't, I thought you looked better than that. 
he's really trying to like minimize his huskiness uh, within yeah, that profile picture. But what he's not trying to minimize is his racist, his racist attitudes. Uh, he's doing the angles, man. He, but how much do you want to bet? Like if you go into his fridge or his freezer, there's like just boxes of frozen taquitos from Costco. Yeah, there's definitely, I mean, he's definitely got frozen taquitos on hand and he probably has a personal deep fryer as well. He's the sort of guy who's got a deep fryer in his home. I got to think that he's got that. He's got a deep fryer right next to a giant bottle of metformin right next to a giant bottle of, you know, some sort of blood pressure medication <laughs> you know, and, and then something for his eyeballs. Cause I'm pretty sure his eyeballs are strained at this point with this constant blood pressure. That guy also has a history of, uh, he got another racist tweet, uh, against Lovey Smith from back in the day. Uh, cause apparently this guy is also a Tampa Bay bucks fan. So he's a, he's a classy individual, which makes sense. I mean, I'm not from Florida. I know where Miami is. And then I don't know where any other city in Florida is within the giant, you know, sea of retention ponds mm. that exist down there. Sure. But what I understand is Tampa and Florida State are both kind of in that, like, like kind of the nutsack of Georgia, like right it's, underneath there. No, no, no. It's like, imagine Florida as a gun. Like, you know, they call it the gun shine state for all the uh, mentally handicapped people that have that bumper sticker on their car the gun shine state uh, we got the we got the oregonians up here <laughs> that's what we got. got get a new fucking slant people anyways uh it's kind of like where you put your figure the trigger that's where oh, okay. tampa and tallahassee kind of in that range um not the brightest bunch that lives in there i'm sure there's some learned people that have library cards in that area but for the most part uh not the most intellectual people of Florida. So that's a natural transition into our next game here. 49ers at the Buccaneers. So I got this one right at least. Bucks 27, Niners 9. Niners follow 2 and 9. Bucks go to 4 and 7. It was a return of Jameis Winston. And I'll tell you what, Jameis must have seen the optometrist in his off time because he saw them all the day, baby. He saw them all. Zero and he didn't throw any but any picks or anything um on his return. And that was that was good to see. It's good to see, but, like, aren't you supposed to lose these games? Like, don't you not win these games so you get a better pick? Or is Dirk Cutter just that in fuck it mode? He's trying to win games at this point. I mean, they're trying to win. I mean, they, they've they got stuff to play for. Granted, they're not going to the playoffs, but they still got a chance at having a little bit of pride going on the rest of the year. Mm, odd to hear for a Florida team. Uh, but I will confirmed- tell you this. I, I doubled up on the Buccaneers this morning, so I had a bet on them. And then there was some news that came out that made me think that the 49ers defense may have a little bit of trouble. And that, of course, was Reuben Foster. We don't get into this bullshit too much, but he has been arrested yet again for domestic violence against the same woman that he beat up, that he allegedly did or did not beat up last time. (laughs) This is all allegedly. Allegedly. Um, the, we're going to have to drop the allegedly off of that there pretty soon. I mean, how many fucking times <laughs> does this have to happen before we can say, you know, how many hookers got to disappear in Indianapolis before we can drop the allegedly off of, you know, Jim Irsay being a murderer. We're but just anyhow, doing the math, guys. We're just doing the math. We're just doing the math. Hey, we don't have any evidence. We're just, we're just asking the questions, people. But Reuben Foster arrested and released. So he's out there on the streets. Uh, I'll be good to see him in a Cowboys uniform here in a couple weeks. So we'll wait for that. They got a playoff push to make. Sean Lee's injured. And, you know, hey, he'll probably be able to play out the rest of the year before he gets uh before he, you know, gets put on that six games I can't quit beating up women list, which is bullshit. But anyhow, I figured that that would hurt the Niners both in their morale and in their defensive performance. I was right there. And Mike Evans becomes the youngest wide receiver ever to compile 5,000 yard seasons. He's quietly putting together a very good career. He had a good rookie season too. He, he's always been good. The problem is, you know, the, uh, what is it? The quarterbacks, they're just not good. So, you know, and the crazy thing about Mike Evans is he, I think he's got like a little bit less yarders than Michael Thomas this year. So everybody's circle jerking Michael Thomas and Drew Brees. But imagine if Mike Evans was uh, getting balls thrown by uh, Drew Brees, he'd be uh, like, pff, he'd be amazing. He'd be crushing it. And moving on to the next game, Pats at the Jets. This was a slow start. I was a little worried. Most money bet at any game this week, you know, 
from the betting public was on the Patriots to cover the spread. So the bookmakers were happy early, but they were sad late. And spread was, depending when he got in on it, it was anywhere to, from 12 to 13. Pats 27, Jets 13. Pats go ahead and cover, move to 8 and 3. Jets fall to 3 and 8. And, you know, not a whole lot of notable things from this. The Pats, they ran the hell out of the ball. Sonny Michelle, 133 yards. They had over 200 yards rushing as a team. And that's it. That could be it for Todd Bowles. I know they're not making any changes in season, but at this point, they got to be making phone calls to see who they can line up to replace that guy. I, I absolutely love watching their offense, though. You got Gronk, you got Michelle, you got Gordon, you got Edelman, and then you got Hogan, the security blanket. I mean, that offense is is firing on all cylinders. I just love seeing Josh McDaniel succeed. He's he quietly wins the award for being the the best person ever in the world for fucking over the Colts. So Josh McDaniels, if you're listening, keep up the good work, buddy. You're killing it. What's funny it. is there are a lot, there's a lot of heat. There's a lot of rumors that once again, he's like a hot head coaching candidate. And so I remember when that happened, people said, that's it. His career is over. His career is over. He'll never get another chance at another job. And here we are literally like eight months later and people are saying, oh, Josh McDaniels, he sure can't coach. <laughs> I wonder maybe he wants to come coach my football team. But I don't know. I don't know what sort of kind of contract you can get with him. I would not like <laughs> I would just I would not think about hiring him unless the Patriots got eliminated very early in the playoffs and you could actually just sign him that day to a contract because yeah, he I'm has gonna laugh wiggled out of it before. I'm going to laugh if a team does the same thing. Like, they, you know, they sign him, at, you know, once the playoffs start, but it's not an official contract. And then at the very end, whatever, Bill Belichick, Robert Kraft, pull him in and do their thing. And he backs out again. That shit was hilarious. Josh McDaniels, please do that again. I can't get the, you know, I keep getting this feeling that Bill Belichick is like slowly grooming Josh McDaniels in a weird way that like they don't want him to leave. He might succeed, BB. I don't know. Kind of like how Drake groomed that one chick from Stranger Things. I think they're doing <laughs> the same thing for Josh McDaniels, you know? So he's doing a Millie Bobby Brown on, right. uh, yeah, which, yeah, that's dark. That's dark. Uh, Drake, you're a monster. And you're also uh, not a good dad from what Pusha T tells me. <laughs> what I understand from Pusha T, you are not a good father either. Um, so that's. <laughs> That's unfortunate. You're you're as bad of a father as Eli Manning is a quarterback. Giants, they lose 22-25 at the Eagles. The Eagles were on fucking life support here uh, early in the third quarter. They're down 19-11 at half. They ended up pulling it out because, of course, Eli could muster nothing in the second half of this game. And a couple things from this. I don't know if you, you saw Josh Adams – He's a running back for the Eagles. This dude is huge. He's fast. He played at Notre Dame, and nobody drafted him. I remember when that happened. I was like, how the fuck did that guy not get drafted? I'm not saying he's the best running back in the league or that he was even the best running back on the field because Barkley looked great today. But here's the thing about Josh Adams. They actually gave him the ball. They didn't – They, I think AP might have sent him a little DVD of the Rock, had him watch <laughs> that before the game, said, hey, dude, you got to get hungry get in there, get your carries because Barkley only had five touches in the second half. And there's no excuse That's for that. Crazy. If you're a giants fan, it's like uh you wasted a fucking first round pick on this guy. Why don't you use him? You know, like, isn't that the point you get a running back young and cheap and you just kind of like use him up. Like, why would you, I think he only had five touches. Even the announcers like kept circling him like, Oh, he's going to get the touch this time. Oh wait, no, he didn't. They were like all saying the same thing. It doesn't make any sense to me. But what the fuck do I know? Good job, didn't Pat Shermer. Game plan didn't make any sense to Odell Beckham either. He came out after the game and was like, yeah, man, you know, they're missing their top four defensive backs. I would have really loved to attack them, but that wasn't in the <laughs> game plan. <laughs> I was like, oh, dude, he's throwing some Aaron Rodgers level of shade on his coaches right now. Yeah. He, he didn't think of that, though. Somebody whispered that in his ear, and then he just repeated it later on. Um, I was going through the comment sections of, I think it was like a Reddit uh, post-game thread, and uh, I don't know why this made me laugh. I'm just going to say it because we're done talking about this game. But somebody said, Eli Manning, the type of dude to put a blanket over his PS4 when it's on rest mode. I don't know what that means, but I thought it was funny. <laughs> so I thought, <laughs> but I thought it was I have no idea what that means either. 
but it's funny. No idea. So. He is the type of guy who would probably like back in the day when he had split screen would tape a blanket across the middle of the TV and then sit under it when play. So you couldn't fucking like screen snipe him or whatever, mm-hmm. whatever that ninja guy is talking about stream sniping people. Uh, he's the sort of little bitch that that ninja guy is. Did you see that thing too? Uh, the refs did something that I, I liked for once is they were first a, a face mask call that wasn't a face mask. Did you see that? I was blown away. I was like the one thing they did right this week. I like uh, it made me kind of feel like the shit isn't rigged, you know, kind of like when Jeff Bezos raises the minimum wage to hide from the fact that he's about to fire a fourth of the people and rehire robots. Kind of the same thing, you know, it's there was not a big rigged, strike in, uh, in Europe by on Black Friday. A bunch of Amazon people walked out. Let me not guess. Getting... Nothing happened. Yeah, they're not getting paid enough money. And then what happened? They never got their jobs back. And Jeff Bezos just sent in an army of robots to do their shit. And now they're fucking, now they're down at the border getting tear gassed right now. Uh, <laughs> trying, trying to get in here, get some fucking jobs. But we're hey, talking those about. Are my those are my people. Yeah. Don't you dare. Don't those you are your dare. people, man. Like I said, my thanks people. for thanks for joining us amidst the chaos, BG. I appreciate it. And, yeah, I'm actually uh, talk- currently t- tented up in Nicaragua right now, making my way up. So Border Patrol, look out for uh, for PG. I'm coming. Look out for it, man. I'm glad we can do this remote. But anyhow, talking about coaches getting some shade thrown on them, nobody, nobody. Hugh Jackson did not have to put his sunscreen on today because he was covered in shade the entire day from front to back. <laughs> Browns 35, Bengals 20. And let's start with the big news from this game. We had ourselves a Jeff Driscoll sighting, and I did not even fucking know that that guy was still in the league. I saw him like preseason. I thought it was one of those quarterbacks that you sign for like one game, so you can kind of like tickle your fancy, and then you instantly cut him. But I didn't realize he was the backup. He's the backup. But going back to that, Andy Dalton with a thumb injury? What kind of bullshit is that, dude? It has like a, a little sense of like a Paul Pierce oops, I, I don't feel good anymore, and he's getting pulled out of the playoffs. I think Andy Dalton's fine. I think he's just had enough of the Bengals. Prove me wrong. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow tomorrow the x-ray is going to come out. His fucking thumb's going to look like Paul George's leg. <laughs> you're you're going to be like, all right, all right, I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and admit that I was wrong there. But there's a lot if of I athleticism. If I see the x-ray, fine, fine. Yeah. But yes, I, you're right. Go back to Jeff Driscoll. Please shit on him. Please. A lot of athleticism shown today by Jeff Driscoll. That's uh, that's his thing. And he he I thought he was one like you said one of those camp arms where you're like, oh, we're going he's a camp arm. We're going to bring him into camp and then you know he gets cut on hard knocks with Kajuste mm-hmm. and then they're out Kajuste! driving around and, <laughs> and then they're out driving around in the van potting with their dogs for like the next 6 months. I thought he was going to be on that program, but apparently he's still <laughs> in the NFL and that's crazy. And, you know, the Browns Crazy. snap a 25-game road losing streak. And those players, they come out, and they they have just dropped trowel and laid a steamer all over Hugh Jackson. Demarius Randall had that pick, handed the that ball to awesome. Hugh. <laughs> Every Twitter went crazy on that. That was great. That was good. And then, of course, Baker Mayfield after the game. You know, yeah. Hugh tried to come in with a little warm embrace. He wasn't having any of that. Then he went to the podium. And he had a couple things – talking shit about them and one of them was you know we just got people who we trust calling plays now <laughs> we like Ooh, calling the plays and some that. other things and he's like yeah i mean that guy's in our locker room and is telling us to play for him and then two weeks after he's gone he goes and signs the fucking team that we play twice a year he's like what's up with that man i don't where i'm at on that so That's i love baker point. mayfield i love the shit that he's been talking um i saw a post uh this is a question i don't know i hope there's a funny answer to it how possible is it that Marvin Lewis gets fucking canned and then replaced by another beautiful bald man in Hugh Jackson? Uh, I mean, that was that was floated out there. I think there's as much credibility to that as there is the Condoleezza Rice as the next head coach of the Browns. Because You're sexist. You're I'm sexist. not sexist. Piece I'm just shit. saying she's not experienced. If they want to hire Case Keenum's wife, who we'll get to earlier, who's one of the front runners for co- coach of the year this year, if they want to hire her, I'm all for that because she fucking knows football. Connelly's a right. She doesn't know shit about football. I mean, outside of her, you know, sitting in a room arguing about 
you know, why Ohio State should always make the fucking college football playoff. But it's a big day, you know, big week in Ohio. Great week if you're a Browns fan, you know, up and down week if you're a Buckeye slash Bengals fan. So they had a reverse Harbaugh going on in their house. You know, they had a good Saturday, bad Sunday. That's how it goes sometimes. But another bad Sunday for the Panthers. Panthers fall to six and five. They're on a three game skid. Seahawks go into Carolina. They win this thing 30 27. Russell Wilson, 339, two TDs, overcoming Christian McCaffrey's big day. Fantasy fans all over the world are either happy as hell or sad as fuck that they had to play against that guy and or had him on their team. But something's not right in Carolina, and they're going to have a big road to hoe to make the playoffs. They got the Saints the last two out of three weeks. I think they're out of the playoffs at this point because the Saints are one game away from clinching the playoff spot. And there's other strong teams. So uh, sad year for the Panthers fan. Let me ask you a question, though. How does it make you feel to watch a fellow Caucasian man like yourself putting up good numbers? Does it make you feel like you want to drive to Taco Bell, crush some Chipotle? How, does, how do you feel watching Christian McCaffrey fucking just slice and dice over here? I don't know. I mean, I don't think about that too much. I mean, yeah, he's a white guy. Uh, there are a lot of white guys, you know, in the NFL. You know, most of them are playing offensive line or punter or quarterback. Not a lot of them are playing running back, but I mean, that's just, that's the way it is. But you know, you know me, I don't see color. I don't see, I'm not, you know, I'm not racist. I'm not transphobic. You know, I'm not any of those things. Uh, you know, like I said, you got a little bit of little problem with your transphobia. A lot of like people on Twitter, that's a big thing on Twitter right now is everyone's coming out and they're, I guess somebody got banned off of Twitter because they're like, you know, if you're a man, if you're born a man, you're a man. If you're, you know, you can't can't be anything but a man. And then Twitter banned them. So you know, all these right wing <laughs> people are like, you know, this is <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody on Twitter is fascist, right? No matter who the fuck you are, you're a fascist. You're either a fascist for speaking your mind. You're a fascist for silencing people. You're transphobic. You're Islamophobic. This is a very volatile place that that social media platform. Uh, did you get a chance to see that Tyler Lockett uh, celebration, like the Tyloo Allen Iverson celebration? Because that was pretty kick ass. That one I did not see. Yeah, just a classic, like you know, dude, like this fade away three, and then the other guy in the celebration falls down, and he just like stepped over him, like Tyloo style. Uh, it was very disrespectful to Tyloo. But Tyler doesn't give a shit because, you know, as we both know, he's at home eating haagen dulce de leche ice cream covered in his own seat. Just stroking it out, drying his flashlight in his bathroom, <laughs> waiting for round two of the day. And you want to talk about getting fucked? That's me. God damn it, Buffalo Bills. God damn you. All right. So uh, the Buffalo Bills are on my black. I got a whole new blacklist now for the Buffalo Bills. I'm, I'm, I bet on them. They fucked me. I bet against them. They fucked me. I am not betting on the Buffalo Bills at any Buffalo Bills games for the rest of the year. Cause I said to myself, God damn it, Jacksonville, you have, you got to have some pride. Like there's a little bit of pride left in that locker room. Jalen Ramsey had all that stuff to say about Josh Allen. He's going to back it up. And then it all came tumbling down. And then I forgot. Oh, hey, little blind spot in my thinking. Hey, Bobby, Blake Bortles is still the quarterback <laughs> for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He yeah, threw for 127 yards, two interceptions. And then, of course, the highlight of the game slash low light, Leonard Fournette finally stitched his hamstrings back together, had 95 yards, two touchdowns. Before he got in a slap fight with what Shaq Lawson and got kicked out of the game. Yeah, that was pretty uh, pretty hilarious. Um, they kind of, I don't know, man. It's kind of like when when you're on Tinder or like at least in the Tinder verse when both of you know both you and the female or the Grinder verse because I'm not racist or whatever. Yeah, or the Grinder verse. Come on now, or the Grinder verse. You guys technically both swiped right. At this point, you guys need to fight. And the NFL needs to take advantage of this moment and have like an end game fisticuffs. And I guess, I don't know, maybe they make it one point or two point. And I think everybody was watching really enjoyed that fight. But what pissed me off the most was the announcers that were like, oh my God, this is disgraceful. I can't believe this is going on. 
dude, can you guys like shut up so I can listen to them fucking talk shit to each other, please? Because this is the most exciting part of the game right here. And you guys are sitting here fucking white knighting and circle jerking each other. Just shut up so I can hear what Leonard Fernet is saying to the other dude. They both swiped right. They they need to be fucking right now or something. Come on. All I'm saying is these guys, what we got to get into with this is we got to have, we got to just let hockey etiquette take over here. Everybody, totally. get, your, everybody totally. get your helmets off, grab each other by the shoulder pads and just start throwing overhand rights. That's the only punch that's allowed. All right. You get one hand to grab with, you get to throw overhand rights. And then the first man to fall, hey, you lose. You get, you get like 60 seconds. You get to go at it. And then you get pulled apart, and that's it. They do this all the time in hockey. Like it's not like it's unseen in sports to have a little bit of fisticuffs. But I, what I get tired of is watching people punch other dudes with helmets, helmets and full face masks on. You're not hurting no him, sense. man. You're just gonna break your hand. Like you're just gonna break your hand. Brian Cushing had that a couple of years ago, where he like headbutted a dude. Did you see that? He was a Texans linebacker. I think he headbutted yeah. one of his own teammates on like a touchdown celebration. And then, like, one of, the, one of the guys on the side was like, yo, he's fucking crazy. <laughs> and Brian Cushing was, like, bleeding from his forehead. But uh, he's going to have some, a segue uh, He got caught on a couple it, so. times for, uh, for juicing, <laughs> did Brian Cushing. So he, he yeah. <laughs> maybe that's – I'm not saying those two things are related. I'm just saying that they're, they're probably related. <laughs> you know, they're probably We're just related. doing the math, folks. We're just doing the math. We're just doing the math here, doing the math in the Chargers game. There's about 18 and 19 home fans, so a little bit more than expected. Chargers go to 8 and 3, Cardinals fall 2 and 9, 45 10, Chargers cover. That was a good one for me. Josh Rosen looked terrible, 105 yeah. yards, one he touch, did. one interception. On their side of the ball, Phillip Rivers looked tremendous. He completed 25 passes in a row to start the game. And they kept talking about that, and they're like, oh, he's going to, he's, tied the record and the holder of the record ryan Tannehill. so i'm not sure how prestigious of a record that actually is that he tied like if ryan Tannehill can hold that record and eh, it doesn't mean much doesn't mean much what, to me at least do you remember what the record is what is it it's 25 in a row so 25 completions in a row i think i watched that dolphins game back in the day and it was just like 25 slants in a row so it's not really like he was throwing bombers or anything philip rivers is a fucking excellent quarterback i feel kind of bad though chargers are eight and three cardinals are two and nine nobody gives a shit literally nobody cares um they kept panning to the to the, they played at StubHub, man they kept panning to the the stadium and it was fucking empty dude there was literally nobody there i did some research i did some pg 98 research and apparently you could buy tickets for as little as nine dollars. But nine dollars, oh not and I'm talking front row seats. This isn't uh nosebleeds, this is like front row. But it seems like nine dollars is a little too pricey for the people that are living out in San Diego County. I think they're spending all that money on rent. Oh, they're they're in a, they're in LA, man. They're in LA. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, yeah. But here's the thing. Yeah, you didn't hear anything about the Chargers giving away tickets. <laughs> so it wouldn't mean anything. Like, it wouldn't mean anything. It's like there are homeless people that, that go into Chargers games just so they can clean up in the restroom because it's cheaper than, like, <laughs> it's cheaper than, like, having to buy a pack of gum at a gas station to that get is to use their fucking, facilities. That's, that's a fucking ridiculous, dude. That is crazy to me. So, you know, congratulations, all 15 Chargers fans. And Phillip Rivers actually came out and said, yeah, we haven't had a home field advantage. You know, he 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 phrased it kind of lightly as far as like, oh, yeah, you know, because of the because we've been transitioning. Right. And I was like, Phil, that's kind of transphobic okay, of you Phillip. to say that. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, let's go. Ahead, let's go ahead and transition in the next game. Talk about Ryan Tannehill. He almost led the Dolphins to victory in Indianapolis. But like we said, Captain Andrew Luck beat the Dolphin men 27-24. Colts go to 6-5. and five. Dolphins fall to 5-6. and six. Andrew Luck, another big day. Had a couple bad interceptions. You'll get that with him. But at the end of the day, the, Dolph the Dolphins did enough to fuck me over to keep the Colts from covering. That was nine points. They didn't cover that. So I don't really care if they won because I lost. But... Good news for the Colts. Frank Gore, hey, he had 67 yards in his return to Indianapolis, and he just keeps on trucking. He's going to be rocking those segways down the road. Uh, Andrew Luck, though, is putting up crazy numbers, man. He's had an incredible game, and he's looking taller. He's looking beefier. Um, you know, 
you know, he's probably taking some HGH, honestly, because God damn it, his hair follicles are not looking good, man. Whatever I'll tell you what, if he was at Thanksgiving dinner with you, he'd have been getting roasted too. Like oh, he would not yeah, have gotten dude. out of that easy. Uh, Dude, whatever flex seal that you're using on your ligaments, use that shit on your hair follicles, bruh, because that shit is not looking good. But I think they're going to end up, you know, hurting somebody's feelings here in the AFC South because they are slowly creeping up. They started one and five. I'm pretty sure they're six and five now. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but they are six and five. Like... I don't think they started one and five, though. Let me look um, here. Either way, six and five is looking good. Um, but they I did, think they're they more did of a complete... start one and five. You're correct. I yeah. think they're more of a complete team, though, than the Houston uh, Jitterbugs and the fucking Tennessee Titans over here because they're looking a little bit more complete than both of those teams. I think they are, too. And, I mean, they got, Jackson, they got, they got Jacksonville uh, next week. They got Houston left on the schedule. So, yeah, they got a chance. They got Dallas, the Giants, Tennessee. They got a chance to win the rest of these things. So, Jim Mercer's you know, been listening to the pod, dude. He is fucking pissed off. He's trying to make sure that these Colts make the playoffs so we can eat our words. It's another mortar and pestle night for Jim. Congratulations, Jim. You go ahead and enjoy that. And another happy person is notorious asshole John Elway as the Broncos take out the Steelers 24-17. Now, they looked fucking clueless at certain points in time. Did the Steelers couple big turnovers and ben roethlisberger what the hell was he looking at at the end there like who, who the fuck know. was he throwing that ball to they did a replay like three or four angles of it and if that wasn't going to get intercepted by the defensive tackle the guy right behind him would have intercepted it too so he like i don't know what he was looking at who fucking knows but mike tomlin he was not happy dude i'm so glad they panned on him for like a good three or four seconds after that was intercepted he did not look happy. Fucking hilarious. This is a sloppy game by the Steelers on the road. Uh, you know, James Conner had that that fumble down deep down in the red zone. And then, of course, they had everybody's least favorite NFL rule where the guy fumbles the ball, the offensive guy's running into the end zone, and then he fumbles, he gets he, a fumble happens, and then it ends up going out of the end zone. So then it's a turnover. That's stupid. That's stupid. <laughs> It's a dumb like rule, and Bill Barnwell, he got an idea. Some random like Twitter dude came up with this. He's like, dude, if they fumble it out of the end zone, the offensive team should just get the ball at the opposing, tw- you know, at the opponent's twenty yard line, right? It's like a reverse touchback, right? So you don't want to, you don't want to reward people for trying to like, you know, reach the ball out, you know, and th- so you can, you don't want to give them at like the one yard line. Because otherwise, people would just be kind of like throwing the ball in the end zone all the time. Right. And they'd be like, oh, I didn't make it. Whatever, dude. We get the ball at the one. But it's bullshit that you could fumble the ball, not have anyone get possession of it, and then lose possession of the ball. It's a dumb rule. Yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid. I mean, maybe not the 20, but maybe just just out of the red zone, like right out of field goal range, maybe like the 35, 40. So that it's like you can fuck up or maybe get sacked and you're out of field goal range, you know, or you have to at least kick like a 60 yarder or something. Um, or maybe even like something that. like, you know, the other the other team has to do like a safety kickoff to you. Like, you know, after you score a safety, they, they kick okay. the ball off to you. Yeah, Maybe okay. something like that. But that's bullshit. And as somebody who has been on the Steelers today, another team that really let me down, uh, I am particularly against that rule for today Uh, had i had my money on the broncos we wouldn't be talking about that at all and we talked about earlier sneaky candidate for coach of the year this year i mean a lot of people talking about matt Nagy, sean McVay, you know sean payton but we also got to consider case keenum's wife and put her on that short list for coach of the year because she's really got the broncos back on track Looking good, and speaking of back on track, they've got four games. Their next four games are very winnable. I'm going to read them off to you. They got the Bengals. They've got the well, they, excuse me. They've got a Jeff Driscoll led Bengals. They've no, got the okay. Well, well, I don't know about that. He's you know Von Miller's going to have a tough time chasing him down. <laughs> we got the the shifty Bengals. They got the Niners. They got the dangerous Browns, and they've got the Raiders. Those are all four winnable games, depending on. Um, how much film Case Keenum's wife has watched, but still very winnable. So the next four games, uh, I think right now the Broncos are what, five and six, six and five? 
five and six. So they're still alive in that wild card race. They're not dead and buried yet. I don't know if we gave them the shovel yet, but we're going to have to we take did. that back and listen to them plead a little bit more <laughs> before we can hand it to, oh, you say you have three kids and let me have that back. Let's hear a little bit more about this. Yeah, we're at the Goodfellas stage where you, me, Ray Liotta, and fucking Joe Pesci are going back and digging up the body because we got to relocate it. That's kind of where we're at. Or maybe we do that thing where, I don't remember what movie that's from, but where there's the hitman, and then they lay down. Maybe it's from the movie, I think it might be from the movie Eraser with uh, our, our good friend Arnold Schwarzenegger. Army! Where he takes a picture of somebody and they look like they're dead. And then he sends that as like a you know a proof of the kill to to whoever oh, yeah. wanted him dead. I think yeah. that's from that movie, maybe from other movies too. But we might have to do that with the Broncos at this point because they are they are putting up a fight. Yeah, we currently have them face down in a bathroom. Um, you got a shotgun to their head, and I'm going through their pants looking for a wallet, looking for money, and I see somebody recognized there. So we don't know the ending just yet, but, you know, we'll see the next couple of weeks if we pull that trigger or we let him fly, let him uh, escape here. Yeah, we're going to let this white boy go. He saved my cousin's life. Thank goodness. Uh, good good on you, Ewan McGregor. <laughs> You're going to make it through this. Was that Ewan McGregor? No. That was Ewan McGregor, yeah. Was that Ewan McGregor? Okay. Yeah. Could have been him and... I don't know. They kind of look all similar, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. What's uh, No, that was Ethan Hawke. What did I say? You and McGregor? Oh, you're yeah, I said you and Mc- yeah. That was that's Ethan Hawke. As I'm sorry, Ethan there's Hawk. that there's that great uh, Family Guy bit where you know they're talking about it's Asian people. Whenever they see a white guy, they're like, "Oh my God, it's Ethan Hawke!" <laughs> oh my God, it's <laughs> yeah. Ethan Hawke! Oh yeah, because <laughs> yeah. we all look the same to them. That's a sociological fact, people. You can look that up. Uh, but anyhow, somebody who's not getting off the hook anytime soon. Uh, we're gonna talk a little. At these Thanksgiving Day games. So the Bears beat the Lions. Nothing interesting there. Redskins lose to the Cowboys. And the one thing I didn't cover in my Thanksgiving special was the news that came out. People that aren't getting off the hook are AP's kids. <laughs> and so AP <laughs> came out. He had one too many carries. All right. So he watched that DVD a little bit too much. Went out there in the practice fields, banging around, and then got on, you know, got on an interview with somebody and is like, yeah. Yeah, I'm still kicking the shit out of my kids, man. I am still giving them a whooping. I don't care what the NFL says. I don't care what the state of Texas says. I don't care what their mama says. I know how to raise these kids. (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah, you know this thing is being handled internally because I haven't heard anything about it. So you heard that one brief riff, and then it seems like ESPN is done shitting on AP. So they're done roasting him. Um, AP, keep hitting your kids. You know, keep hitting them. I don't really care. You um, raise your kids how you see fit. All I'm saying is, AP's kids would not have missed that kick at the end of the Territorial Cup because they know how to deal with pressure. They know how to <laughs> deal with that. That's like no pressure for them. They face bigger pressure than that in their life. Let's see what's Looking going at on. you, football dad. Looking at you, buddy. <laughs> Looking at you, brother. All right. It's called you know putting people through the grinder. Pressure form steel, that sort of a saying. No pressure. Guy's breaking like a like he's built in the copper age or the bronze age. We got bronze <laughs> age kickers on our team, man. So Packers nice. and the Vikings, they're going on right now. That's at halftime. That's tied up at 14. I'm on the Vikings here, so I'm hoping they can get it together, take that the rest of the way. Tomorrow night, I got the Titans, the Texans. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to get out of here. We're going to watch the rest of this Sunday night game. You'll have a great rest of the week. We'll be back here on Thursday to preview week 13 in the NFL.